In this program, the kids in the audience learn more about intervals than I knew when I was their age, even though I've been studying the violin since I was four. When you play music all your life, you internalize the rules. When I finally started studying music theory, I loved it because I could put names and logical reasons to the things that I felt intuitively. Too bad I didn't have Professor Bernstein to help me out earlier. His explanations of how the composers on this program built their works makes me think about how remarkable Bernstein's own compositions are. I recently worked on a violin suite version of Bernstein's West Side Story. I first heard this masterpiece when I was a kid, but as I studied it, I became even more in awe of its architecture and beauty. The tunes are so cleverly interrelated, and there are all these little details that you don't notice until you look closely. The arranger and I developed this violin version of that famous piece, but Bernstein himself composed a wonderful work for the violin called Serenade. I think that his Serenade is up there with the great violin concertos of the 20th century. Somebody asked me this week, why in the world did you pick intervals to spend a whole program on? Who cares about intervals? That's technical stuff. Well, I'll admit it's a bit technical, but after all, we did decide, didn't we, that the interval is the atom of music, and what can be more important or basic than that? So let's forge ahead and get to know intervals better. Now, you remember that famous measuring tape we used before to mark off the octaves. Now, let's just consider, out of this measuring tape, one octave, that is one foot of the tape. And what a lucky coincidence. It turns out it's marked off into 12 inches. And there also happen to be exactly 12 notes in an octave. Now, I don't want to confuse you. I know I said before that an octave has eight notes in it, which is why it's called an octave. But then I was speaking of our regular major scale, which uses only some of the notes that exist in an octave. For instance, as you know, the C major scale uses only the white notes of the piano. Eight of them. But there are black ones, too. So, all in all, there are actually 12 different notes in every octave, each note exactly the same distance from its neighbor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And with the thirteenth, we're back again where we started. Now, the distance between any two neighboring notes is, as you know, a second from here to here. But as you may not know, it is a minor second. A minor second is the smallest distance we can move from one note to the next in our Western musical system, which is based on the 12 different tones, like the 12 inches of the foot rule or the 12 minor seconds in our octave.